Hey guys, Chad here with the Reptile Rangers. Now we're at the Kernersville Reptile Zoo and Medical Center again today, and we're going to talk about another medical issue. It is intestinal parasites, okay? Intestinal parasites is something that you're probably going to end up dealing with at some point in time throughout your reptile keeping life, okay? Whether from breeding, whether from just your personal pet, um, whether from dealing with maybe a rescue or taking in an unwanted animal, you're eventually going to deal with an intestinal parasite problem. It's prevalent throughout reptiles it's not that big of a deal okay not like sometimes it's made out to be yes it is a problem yes the intestinal parasites can kill an animal uh, but it's not so over dramatic that it cannot be dealt with very easily very simply and you can catch the early signs and symptoms of it a lot of the times without a lot of expensive um, testing and things like that okay so let's take off here uh, and go ahead and we'll talk about intestinal parasites in reptiles all right first there's pinworms and tapeworms and roundworms and other uh, other such organisms such as uh, flagellates coccidia cryptosporidium uh, and entomobas okay there are so many different types of intestinal parasites out there uh, that again it, it takes tests to know which one is which but generally speaking they can all kind of give the same symptoms okay uh, your entomobas um, your flagellates, your coccidia, your cryptosporidium, that has to be tested under a microscope. You cannot see that, not like you would some of your worm uh, intestinal, worm-like intestinal parasites, okay? Um, those you can see sometimes in fecal samples, sometimes you can see them in uh, regurgitation. Um, there's multiple different uh, ways of being able to tell certain types of intestinal parasites, and then it takes a uh, microscope test to tell other ones, okay? Now, understand the difference that's the symptoms of the intestinal parasites would be loose stool, maybe really smelly stool, uh, weight loss, okay? We, we diagnose this all the time um, and deal with this, this part of it all the time. Uh, say, for example, in leopard geckos, uh, leopard geckos got this nice big thick fat tail. They're eating and they're eating, but they start losing weight. Um, then they start slowing down on eating and they're still losing weight and that tail still is getting skinnier and skinnier. Good chance it's got intestinal parasites. Now, there is something else that it could have called cryptosporidiosis, all right, or crypto for short. Um, it is a type of intestinal parasites, but it's intestinal parasite on steroids. I'm not going to talk about crypto in this particular video. That's for another video. Just like in bearded dragons, the adenovirus is something that we've been teaching uh, for probably three to four years now as far as how to deal with it. Um, and it's just now becoming more and more prevalent inside of the bearded dragon world. Uh, both crypto and adeno right now is untreatable. Uh, I'm not going to talk about adeno or crypto specifically in this particular video other than just what I've mentioned here. Um, but again, causes is going to be uh, weight loss um, and uh, bowel movements, uh, really, really bad loose bowel movements, excessively stinky. Um, there are, of course, the signs of like your worms. You see the worms moving in the fecal sample. You see them moving in the regurgitation. Uh, regurgitation can be another sign of intestinal parasites. Um, another sign of intestinal parasites, like we talked about before, would be in uh, prolapses. Uh, prolapse can cause that. Uh, or can be a can be a cause of uh, or a sign of intestinal parasites. Um, so there's several different ways of being able to tell that uh, that you have intestinal parasites. Okay. Now, in in dealing with like with snakes, let's talk about snakes for a minute. Snakes can get intestinal parasites. It's not typically as often. Uh, for example, we've had a gaboon, uh, several gaboons, uh, that from time to time they'll get intestinal parasites. Nine times out of ten they come into us uh, with intestinal parasites or we end up with intestinal parasites, particularly in our gaboons, because of feeding live food. Most of you know that we prefer doing the live food. Live food, yes, is healthier, but there's, there's catches to everything, okay? When we feed live food, a lot of transmission is done through fecal contamination, meaning some things went around and re-ingested feces that now was contaminated, that now contaminates that animal. Um, picking up parasites on the fur of rats and things like that uh, can be another cause. 
of, of intestinal parasite. Uh, bad foods such as contaminated uh, vegetables and fruits for guys like these guys. It's not been cleaned or not been processed well. Um, you have also bad meat, you know, bad meat products. Um, crickets, again, I'm going to say crickets, hands down, absolutely the world's worst thing that you could give to any freaking reptile uh, because, for one, you can't really gut load them. Number two, they go around readjusting their own feces, which causes the tapeworm, pinworms, and other micro uh, microorganisms in the GI tract, okay? So understand this. Bad, bad stuff, okay? Crickets are just another massive transmission of those uh, of those parasites. However, in talking about doing like with snakes and dealing with live versus frozen rats, okay, so when you, when you freeze something, you kill the natural enzymes in it or you start killing out some of the natural nutrition, all right? So they're not quite as healthy. Yes, they're still plenty healthy. You can still eat it perfectly fine, but it's not just not as, as fully healthy as a live one would be. However, again, when you deal with live, a lot of the times you may end up with the issues of like um, snake mites, okay? Uh, that has been, that has happened before. Snake mites come in on live live rats and then ends up spreading throughout your uh, throughout your snake enclosure. Uh, intestinal parasites can be another issue um, by giving live uh, prey to things like gaboons or snakes or cobras or whatever the case may be. Um, and in the case of the gaboons, we notice a pretty rapid weight loss uh, because they have an excessive amount of intestinal parasite overload. Okay, um, So again, Feeding live is not always necessarily the best thing. I'm not worried about uh, the whole it attacking the animal. That generally doesn't happen. Uh, mice are a little bit more prone to doing that. Rats typically not so much unless they're in there for three, four, five, six days at a time. And then, yes, yeah, it's going to get hungry. It's going to do something. Uh, but this stupidity of in two hours it just jumped right on a snake, it generally speaking, doesn't happen. Um, unless the, the rat was starved to begin with before it was even put in there. Um, however... When it comes to doing the things for snakes, yes, is it safer and a safer bet by doing frozen for intestinal parasite reasons? Absolutely. Um, versus doing a live, but if you do live, um, then it might not be a bad idea to do a parasite regimen. You know, once a year, once every six months, it kind of depends. Depends on who comes in here as to, and, and the situation as to how we, uh, how we do those recommendations as well. Um, and even with our own personal animals here in the zoo, we have our own set foundations for each particular animal in their particular situation. Um, but when it comes to insects, as far as intestinal parasites goes, when we go back to the lizards, uh, such as your bearded dragons, frills, uh, any of your gecko species that doesn't eat just strictly the fruit mix like Pangea, uh, like the crested gecko, something like that. But anything seeding the insects, you need to be aware of the insects themselves and need to be aware of what the insects uh, produce, what they can produce, what they can be carriers of, so on and so forth. Again, crickets, throw that crap right out the window, okay? That, that's just garbage food. Um, if you have to use crickets, we understand that, okay? Just be aware. I would go ahead and do a intestinal parasite regimen um, ever so often. Uh, there's If you don't have easy access to a veterinary practice uh, or somebody like us uh, or somewhere where you can get something uh, that's going to do a parasite regimen, uh, a lot of your importers and your breeders and things like that, they'll go to uh, some of your supply stores and get something called Panicure. Uh, it's meant for equestrian, works pretty well. It's a way of, of kind of killing out some of the bacteria and flushing, uh, flushing that system out. Uh, works, works pretty well. Um, you can utilize that um, if you need to. I mean, don't go crazy with it. No, it would be kind of hard to overdose something because it's not an actual antibiotic kind of thing. But uh, again, this is not one of those recommendations, you know, go home, take Pangea or uh, Panicure and, uh, uh, and start cramming it down the throat of your animal. We're not saying that at all. You do that, that's on you. Uh, but we are saying that uh, a lot of hobbyists and a lot of people that don't have easy access to vets have used uh, Panicure very successfully in the past. Um, I mean, you're welcome to call us. We do consultations by phone all the time for zoos and vets, vets offices. But um, with that being said, just be aware of exactly what you've got going on with your animal. Watch it. Watch the diet. Watch what they're eating. Um, keep track of their gram weights as well. Again, when it comes to intestinal parasites, the parasitic load becomes such an overload that they start losing weight. What's happening is the parasite, as the animal is eating, the parasite is taking the nutrition and leaving the animal with crap. Essentially just that, just crap. Okay. Um, so what happens is it gets broke down and uh, the animal gets none of the nutrition out of it and it becomes this loose, very runny, 
nasty stool um, of nothing, nothing that's nutritionally valuable, okay? Um, there are actual medications that can treat intestinal parasites. Now, I'm not going to bother sh showing a whole heck of a lot of pictures when it comes to this. I mean, most everybody has seen bacteria in some form or fashion. Yes, everything has living bacteria. Uh, we do as well. We have good bacteria. We have bad bacteria. The good bacteria is in there for a reason. It's in there to do a job, uh, but it's the bad bacteria that we want to uh, keep under control, and that includes in, you know, with, with animals like this, uh, like this bearded dragon. Um, so again, when it comes to cleaning, doing vegetables, make sure the vegetables are clean. Just no uh, organisms on, on the vegetables. When it comes to doing feeders, uh, yes, nine times out of ten, it's going to be a little bit better as far as for parasitic reasons to do frozen, uh, because if there was any parasites or anything on there, the frozen feeder is going to uh, have already, uh, or that, that parasite is going to have demised from the freezing temperature inside of your cooler um, or freezer. Um, when it comes to doing meat products, uh, meat products is kind of hard, a hard thing to do. You're just going to have to go off of in the hopes that the store has done a good job. Um, there are certain meat products that can be less carriers. Uh, chicken tends to be a little bit higher. Uh, you can do deer meat, fish, uh, ground beef, turkey. Uh, there's all different kinds of things. Uh, just be aware of, of where the meat comes from. And of course, it's unprocessed. I mean, they don't have frying pans in the, in the forest and in the desert, so it's not like they're cooking their food. Um, so yes, I mean, they eat it raw, uh, but just be aware of the raw meat uh, and where it comes from. Make sure that it's you know that it uh, uh, in the hopes is is parasitic free, uh, but if it's something that you're worried about, then every once in a while, uh, you know, once or twice a year, just go ahead and uh, see about giving your uh, your animal some kind of a uh, a parasitic flush uh, or system flush, just to kind of clean that system out. All right, now. Hopefully this has been helpful. Hopefully this gives an understanding uh, and an overview into intestinal parasites, how it happens, why it happens, some of the ways you can deal with it, and ways to look out for uh, in the event that it has happened, okay, uh, or may be happening, and, and what you can do about it in the meantime. Now, remember, we're taking, uh, we're you know, we're always talking to people about uh, doing potential uh, YouTube uh, sponsorships as far as product placement, uh, doing uh, commercial style videos. Uh, that we integrate into these videos if you're wanting to see your business uh, promoted, something like that. Again, this is Chad here at the Kernersville Reptile Zoo and Medical Center. Uh, make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. Feel free to write us in. People are doing it quite often. Let us know what you want to hear about, what you want to see, uh, what you want us to film about, medical, housing, ecosystems, the zoo, the, the rangers, whatever, okay? Uh, pet care, um, how to set up habitats, whatever the case may be. Uh, there's there's tons of things that we can, uh, we can help you with. We've done a ton so far, and we look forward to doing more. Uh, but again, this is the Reptile Rangers at the Kernersville Reptile Zoo in the Medical Center. Uh, we look forward to seeing you on the next episode, or we'll see you here at the zoo. Later.